Resortloop.com is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Enjoy Joffrey's new single origin coffee, Peru Cafe Feminino. Available at joffreys.com and at the Joffreys kiosk throughout the Disney parks and resorts. And the best part, the sale of Joffreys Coffee Cafe Feminino gives back to worthy projects and programs that enhance the lives of women and their families in coffee communities. That's joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. To our new passengers, aloha and welcome aboard. And go. Yeah, there, you go. there we go. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. I'm Bob Goff. This is resortloop.com. This is the dreaded once a month show. <laughs> <laughs> the DVC roundtable. No, not not dreaded. Uh, looking forward to what do they call that? Uh, uh, it's just highly, highly anticipated. anticipated. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was looking for. Notorious. Yeah. Um, what, <laughs> Tim? We might as well just jump into this. What are we going to talk about today on the DVC a roundtable show? Apparently, there's been some news of a light sword involving the DVC. Apparently, for uh, bum, bum, bum. I know exactly. Emily's got it down. Apparently, <laughs> those who have bought off the uh, the resale market will no longer be able to take part in the perks involved if you were to buy what? it directly from Disney. I know. Man, Tim, you're already going to make me argue with you, aren't you? I'm just, I'm just saying what happened. No, he's already wrong. He's already we wrong. Should, we should probably... Some of the perks. I'm going to need a buzzer. Yeah. We should, Tim, Tim you should probably introduce our, uh, our, our cast of uh, characters today. Okay, we have a very special guest today. I will mention him last because I'm building to a peak. <laughs> First of all, join us, Joe Quattrochi. I'm not the special guest, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> We're happy you're here, too. Emily Hansa Hicks. They call me special a lot. <laughs> and Rebecca Toon. Special. It says so on my hand. And Those our very the oh. usual suspects. Go ahead, Tim. And our very special guest joining us today, Mr. Len Testa. Hey, it's good. Ah, mm. And the crowd goes wild. Mm. <laughs> Let the giggling commence. <laughs> Len, everybody's been very giddy since we got you on the phone here. I, I thought it was the drinking, but uh, but okay. <laughs> that too. That too. It's like a no, rock we're star. Totally used to the drinking. <laughs> yeah. We can handle. We can handle our, our Joffrey. Exactly. We can yeah. handle. It. We can totally handle the liquor. It's just the uh, Disney royalty we have a, a problem with. There you go. There you go. So what are we going to talk about with, uh, again, Tim, with the uh, DVC? The the new stuff. The new stuff. The you mean the new regulations? The new regulation. The new rules. Exactly. <laughs> I know special events of uh, things like uh, from what from what I understand. Uh, please tell me if I'm wrong. Special oh, event get together. Oh, please, <laughs> so, Rebecca, just go ahead and tell us. Well, what's going on here? You know, when you when you bought resale DVC, yes. you were still entitled to a certain number of perks that uh, a. a DVC member who bought directly through Disney were offered. You weren't always entitled to all of them, but you were entitled to some of them. So just recently, they have narrowed that field of perks even more and have taken away a number of them that you used to have. There's still some that remain, but they have narrowed the field down quite a bit. And just to just to be very specific, as you know, I like to be, um, it's only going forward as of the date of the announcement. So the people that bought resale before that were date, grandfathered in, right? Oh, still okay. get the benefits. So I believe I believe that the date was, um, I believe that the announcement was made on April fourth. Yeah. And then I think uh, March was it March? I can't remember when they grandfathered it in from, but you were grandfathered in beyond a certain time. I thought it was like basically the day of the announcement. It, yeah. It. If you if your contract were received by DVC by the end of the day on April third, I think you were grandfathered in. It changed a couple times, and that's what everybody was sort of up in arms about. Um, you know, as people the collective heading. mind of the internet, you know, just blew up because they heard one thing and then heard another, and so there were a lot of questions going on. Yeah, I believe they were um, pushing it out because uh, people who were in the, mid in the middle of doing their paperwork, yeah, mm -hmm. were finding out. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And the other, there's a limbo period when you buy resale where Disney has the right to exercise their right of first refusal. And they usually take almost the full time. They generally don't, they generally don't let you off easy and accept it right, right away. So if you, if you were in that limbo period where your contract had been submitted to Disney and 
you hadn't yet heard if they were going to buy it out from the seller yet. You were not sure if your purchase sort of was now compromised or you basically the purchase you had agreed to was now under different terms. Oh, so that means people would have to start the negotiations over because right. the benefits that this, you thought you were having, ah, oh, that's, that's terrible. And so now the conversation has sort of turned to, now that the dust is settled, the conversation has turned less to those perks in general because the bottom line is when you purchase DVC, you're not really purchasing the perks, you're purchasing the DVC contract, the perks are incidental. And so now the conversation has turned more to is it really that big of a deal that you lose these perks or is the savings from buying resale still an overriding factor in favor of buying resale even without those certain perks? Well, why don't we talk about the perks? What are the perks that you get uh, purchasing uh, uh, DVC from Disney? I believe the um, pre-2011, which was the first time that they started putting restrictions in on buying resale, I believe some of the perks were you could trade off your points for, even though it wasn't, everybody knows if you do any kind of research, um, you you could trade your points for Disney Cruise Line, you could trade your points for the concierge collection and other kinds of uh, timeshares in our collection. Um, So you might want to... Deter- you might want to define a uh, concierge collection because that's that's a term I wasn't familiar with, and so somebody might be confused. I believe as what that is. I believe it. I don't want to be wrong about this because I'm not eligible for those perks. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think it's hotels like I believe like the Mandarin Oriental, like kind of those kind of hotels. Len, you might want to if you know that want to jump in on that. Yeah, but, the, um, the Parker Meridian. I mean, the the bit the Fairmont. I mean, big big name hotels. Are terrible values though in terms of prices. Yeah. You, the, Adventures right. by Disney um, are also rolled out with resale. Yeah, you can and also guess, b- go to God, Disney hotels like the Yacht Club and things like that. But again, those were like sixty oh. plus points a night, which is we. They ridiculous. offered us a, a, a couple about, about a month ago. We were looking for a last minute room, and they offered us um, uh, Coronado Springs. Laurel and I were uh, we're doing hotel research. Uh, we need a last minute room. They offered us Cor- Coronado Springs at thirty nine points. Oh, for, Whoa. for one night. Did you like just in a studio? Did you just take a moment and sort of step back? <laughs> I said, Laurel was on the phone and it was like you know we're doing the math. And plus it was like a there's like a. But is that thirty nine points for one night? One night, a regular room. Okay, so just to give our listeners an idea of what that is, so if you if in my case you were to rent points, you're looking at about. Twelve to fourteen dollars per point. Yeah. So at thirty nine points, that would have been a five hundred and fifty dollar room. Plus a seventy five dollar fee for booking at last minute. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh wow. Or even or even points wise, I stay. At, I like to stay at the Boardwalk Value Season in a studio. That's almost four nights at a regular mm-hmm. standard go. view Boardwalk room in September. Is what Len paid for one night at Coronado Springs. No, didn't do it. Didn't do it. <laughs> oh, well, that, that was what was offered. <laughs> I'm just curious. Did they say that with a straight face, or were they wearing like the Groucho Marx mustache and glasses when they did that? To his, to his credit, the uh, the guy on the phone who said it uh, said, "This is not a good deal, comma." But <laughs> since you asked, uh, there's money, <laughs> yeah. right? So you also get um, you also get discounts. Uh, I think it's like a ten percent discount on purchases. You get uh, a discount on annual passes. Um, you get access to the top of the world lounge. Uh, that is actually tables still in Wonderland as in, well. Tables in Wonderland. That's actually still in place. The um, my favorite for whatever reason I don't know. It just makes me laugh every time they list off all the privileges. No nightly rental fee for DVDs. So if you like to go to <laughs> no. Disney, if you would like to go to Disney and rent a DVD. You can do so for no charge. <laughs> it sounds like you don't have toddlers because I have to say. <laughs> Come on, you bring a computer with you, though. <laughs> and guys, also, there are some other there are some other discounts that I've taken advantage of. For example, um, there is discounts on Walt Disney World Golf, uh, mini golf mm-hmm. boat rentals and stuff like that. I know the, the golf discount is pretty decent. Uh, so you would not be eligible for that as well because you do need to show your your DVC card at the pro shop. Um, there is a and pretty good dis- there is a pretty good discount uh, yeah. at the golf as well. But but like we said earlier, not all of those privileges have been stripped. Like the the DVD rentals is still in place. Okay, guys, so just relax. <laughs> and the pool hopping privileges and Daylight Tower. Um, 
you can still book through RCI and I think it's is it Buena Vista Trading Company or something. You can still do those things. So not everything has been stripped. What about Run Disney or member cruises? Do you know offhand? Run Disney, I believe, stayed in place. I don't know about member cruises. I actually think the member cruises are not. Okay. Lynn may know. Now, Lynn, do you know? I didn't know about the member cruises. I'd be surprised if they got rid of that as a perk simply because the margins on the Disney Cruise Line are so high that they're pretty much welcome everyone with open arms. Yeah. Although the member <laughs> Anybody cruises who's sold out. silly enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. And they're really they're sold well, out. They're completely sold out for the one this year. Wow. Yes. So all those silly people have already booked, and I can't even get in. No. But um, and cruises are historically not the best use of points anyway. Yeah, no, they're so, that And the said, thing to keep in mind is that these are all um, at-will perks. DVC yeah. has and can exercise their right to remove any of them at any at any moment. So you're never right. going to – that's kind of like investing in a private school for your child because you can get a really great parking spot. It, it's not worth the tuition just for the parking spot. You really need to buy because you want to be a DPC member. Yeah. True. Theoretically, they could and may remove all the perks after they're finished selling units, if they ever finish selling units. So that's They will never finish selling units. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they won't. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the revenue gets booked directly to theme parks and resorts. And so the, the year that they stop doing it, their uh, revenue will take such a huge hit that no one wants, no one wants to be the CEO when that happens. So they'll just keep building. Interesting, ah. right? I wouldn't be I wouldn't Actually, be surprised if you see a resort like Caribbean Beach just starting to be converted over, just like totally. they've been doing at Animal Kingdom Lodge, and you know, just they're just gonna start converting rooms or even even Yacht Club. Yeah, I wouldn't those, be surprised to see rooms at Yacht Club. Those are like that's like the last deluxe usually to sell out. Len, if yep. I'm not mistaken, I wouldn't be surprised you see you know floor to convert to DVC units and they'll they'll be selling those. I heard uh, Yacht Club was uh, so they're doing Wilderness Lodge, um, the bungalows. God help me. <laughs> um, then they're doing. My, my, my understanding is that they're either going to do next uh, yacht club because it's fast, and then possibly Caribbean Beach, or they will look at doing something over at Fort Wilderness. That's my understanding of the next next group. Wow. Oh, like in the River Country area. I might exactly. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. I might have to buy direct again if they do yacht club. It'll hurt me, but I'll have to do it. Yeah, I think. Well, yacht club is the last one, right? It's the last deluxe, right? Yeah, it's the last deluxe. But yeah. the the yeah. interesting one would be, and this is sort of speculation on, on my part, but um, if you look at where Caribbean Beach is, um, the way that they could convert like an individual building, you could turn some of those into two-story grand villas because they're they're two-story buildings mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. And okay. you can you can actually isolate the construction to go building by building without affecting you know a central lobby. Or you know, uh, half the guest rooms on one side with the construction. If you start on one end of Caribbean Beach, you can you can really sort of isolate the disruption yeah. to other people. It makes you could split the resort in half essentially, and have half of it be wow. DVC and just work backwards to forwards, like Len said, and just have your regular operations in the front, your DVC in the back, yep. and you essentially turn it into almost like a mini Old Key West. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially what it'll turn into. Do you think, Len, that they would use the uh, the, the uh, rooms that are closer to uh, the main building as a DVC, or are they going to use the ones on the other side of the lake? I think they would, they would probably use the ones closest. That's a good question. You know, would they use the ones that are closest to the, uh, to the food court? Um, yeah, to old Port Royal. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I don't know. They I might prefer further out. I think yeah, further they, out. They could be. I, I think they bank on the loyalty. It's like the reason they built the mermaid rooms at Art of Animation, because they knew right. if they could build something that would sell, that was popular, people wouldn't care how far away they were walking, because that's the loyalty factor. So I don't know. I think I might, I don't know. They might yeah, they might, uh, if, if they do that, though, they might just, uh, you know, they might build a, a nice restaurant over there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. actually got room yeah. um, right by the entrance, uh, directly south of that on Sea, sea Breeze Drive. They've actually got um, a room for like one more set of buildings. They could do a special chicken area in a restaurant. But the other interesting thing that I've heard is um, they could build direct access to World Showcase. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Oh, wow. So a pedestrian bridge over Buena Vista <laughs> Drive. And I mean, it's sure. you're talking about a fifth of a mile, a thousand feet to. I have found my weak spot. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. The, yeah. Um, to the end of, uh, you know. Yep. 
the, the, American, <laughs> the American Adventure. I mean, a thousand feet from the from the farm. Imagine if you, imagine if you got walking access. If you're oh, right. Rebecca and I would right. stumble that easily. Walking access to Epcot. I mean, it'd be I the the fire. Stop. Sure. Yeah. Just so. like the boardwalk. Ah, That'd be awesome. incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would almost so, be like the Grand California now in Disneyland. I mean, they have their own access right? to, to DCA. Yeah. yeah, depending on where you're at. The, I mean, if you're going through from Paradise Pier, for example, and you have to go through the Grand California, that's easily as far as uh, the, the part of uh, the Caribbean Beach to uh, World Circus. I think that's actually uh, a, a doable. The other thing it does is if they provide pedestrian access, think of how much money they save on uh, buses. Oh, yeah. Some, oh. some people will actually make that walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, lots. Yeah. We actually we wish that there were more walking trails. In fact, that's our big knock on uh, the Grand Flirty and the Polynesian is you can't walk to the Magic Kingdom. You have to hop the monorail. Yeah. And, and, and my, Which is traumatic, of course. It might be surprised they haven't done more walking trails. Number one, it's a great environmental message. Number two, they save money doing it. I, I'm, I'm really kind of surprised at that. And, and a lot of people, a lot of people are doing the, the run Disney thing. community would right. love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, mm-hmm. why can't why can't you walk from Animal Kingdom launch to the Animal Kingdom? I mean, I know it's a exactly. So totally here's the agree. here's the big question. I'm sure everybody out there is listening and saying, okay, so I have a choice to to purchase directly from Disney my DVC or go the resale market. Um, which I mean, which one do you guys recommend? Because you're going to save a little money on the re- resale market. Hey. So, then, but you're going to miss out on some of these extras. Well, Where, I think you're going to save a lot of money. I, that's yeah. a, and, and so my my stance on this whole conversation is resale is still the way to go. Yeah. And I was reading um, Nick Cotton, who is a well respected member of the resale market. Um, uh, he sort of wrote this manifesto about what all the changes meant, and he he sort of explained it this way to me, and I found it incredibly telling, but he said the average listing price for 200 points at Saratoga Springs at, from the DVC resale market is around $16,000. Direct from Disney, you're looking at $28,000. So that's wow. a difference of almost twelve grand. And then he put it in this perspective. He says, if, if as a current member from Disney, you get a 10% discount. So you would buy, have to buy... 3,850 t-shirts at $30 per t-shirt to break even. Yeah, you have to spend $120,000. I mean, there's yeah. no... That's a lot of spending. I mean, you wow. can do it, but... And, and, and I have one, of the, one of the other ones that he gave was if you use it to... Um, the biggest discount is like for annual passes. So as a DVC member, the biggest discount you get is annual pass. If you're a family of four and you purchase them every year, you would have to do it for 28 years to recover the difference that you yeah. saved in resale. Wow. First of all, most of the benefits between DVC, um, most of them are actually cross benefits with uh, annual passes. So a lot of the time, even Absolutely. if they remove some of the, yeah, even if they remove some of the benefits, a lot of the same like 10% off merchandise, things like that, you'll still get those with an annual pass. And a lot of DVCers, especially those that can buy a bunch of points resale, um, are able to take advantage of the annual pass discount and then the other thing is i maintain that you still want to buy where you want to stay so mm-hmm. um it still comes down to the booking windows for your convenience especially if you like to travel either at very peak times or very off peak times um and you're fighting over the the uh discounted rooms at jumbo house or something um if you if you are like i want to stay club level at animal kingdom you need to be an animal kingdom owner so you need to buy resale if you want to buy, see, if you want to stay at Polly, yep. Go ahead. Do you ever see a situation where they, and this is also directed sort of towards Lynn, do you ever see a situation where they would um, take that away as a perk that if you bought resale, you could only book at a seven month window instead of an 11 month window? I mean, maybe. It, the, the thing is that it would, it, all it would do would be lower the resale value of the. Exactly. And, and so Disney's not. I mean, they're they're all about propping up the price, right? Does does Disney buy back your your investment and then resell your investment? Do they do that? Mm-hmm. They have the yes ability. So what to, they do, they have the right of first refusal if it goes on the market. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I have heard that. And they exercise now, it all the time. Do they, they, they sell it? They have do they sell it, it at they... a at a discount though? Nope. No, they sell it at their price. So right now, oh. like a. Last time I saw, I think the resale 
not resale, like they're, they sell them, the older resorts on wait lists, they sell them for, I want to say like 125 or 130 or something like that. So they're, they're, they are high prices. They're higher than resale. And they, but what they can do that you can't do as a resale, resale seller is they break up, um, they can break up the contracts into different portions. As for the points, like about Disney, Disney does not advertise that they do have resale. Disney, DVC has their own resale. For an example, my last trip in September, my elusive 50 points I'm still looking for at Saratoga, I actually went over to the sales center. I said, you know, I'm gonna go talk to them anyway, just to see what they got. And they will sell you, they will sell me my 50 point contract. Now, at the time, um, I think it was like Saratoga was about 85 a point. If you find a 50 point contract, it's going to be closer to about a hundred a point. They were going to sell me Saratoga, my, the use year that I wanted for about 165 a point. Ooh. I was like, that is double Ouch. of what I paid, you know, for my 150 contract. I said, no way. I, I laughed at the guy. I said, dude, I ain't some guy who just walked in off the street. Like I am, but I'm not. <laughs> I said, have a nice day. <laughs> I was like, I'm not paying 165 a point for 50 points. I'm like, no, nah, I'll start. I'm, I'm not paying 39 points for Coronado. So, so to answer, you know, what you guys are saying, like, yeah, Bob, they do resell those points. Like, they do have a small resale market, and they will sell it at the current rate. If you want that resort that bad, they will sell it to you at the going rate. That's wow. crazy. I mean, I like Saratoga Springs a lot, but not at 165 points. No, not and, at all. And you still only get the remaining number of years left on that contract, correct? Yeah. 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 Now, Interesting. Now, has anybody heard if you had a resale, you bought yours by resale, and you were to add, you know, add-on points directly from Disney, that would you'd get the membership extras back? You you do, I believe but you, you cannot do. combine yeah. the points to like if I were to buy three hundred points resale at mm -hmm. the Polynesian, and then I bought fifty points at from Disney for the Polynesian, you cannot combine those into three hundred fifty points to book at that eleven. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? They they do have to stay separate, but you do get the benefits back from owning the, that's why a lot of people have said that they would do is buy a very small contract direct from D, from Disney and then buy resale right. for the bulk. Okay. I mean, I mean, for some of the savings, you know, for using Rebecca's, Rebecca's example, you're saving $12,000 on that contract. Some of the benefits and some of the swag that DVC gives you, you know, your little hat, your tote bag, your shirt, you take that 12 grand, you save, you go on eBay, you buy yourself a hat and a tote bag, and you'll, <laughs> feel, and you'll feel just fine about yourself. You'll still have 11,000. You know, and change left over when you're done. Yeah, they've got some other merchandise you can buy, from my understanding. Yeah, they, you know, there's parts like oh, um, in the the band camp edition I was listening to today. They were it was a quick one on the new uh, nighttime experience, and apparently they had only sold a certain number of tickets. So um, I believe Lynn said they sort of shot it out there to people that were staying DVC and offered yeah, it to them for free. Oh, and yeah. So we've got. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, speaking of that, tonight we've got uh, Laurel going to the. Oh, is it tonight? Tonight, another after hours event. But the uh, the apparently uh, Disney is handing out free tickets to tonight's event to people standing wow. at, uh, at deluxe bus stops. Like, if hey, you want to go to Mexico? Oh, wow. free, free tickets. And that's normally how oh, much? Wow. One hundred. Laurel paid one hundred and forty nine dollars for her. And is she actually going by herself? Wow. <laughs> she finds yeah, the she one she is. To deliver. She'll, she'll be periscoping later on. No, no, she's going by <laughs> Very herself. Very good. Very good. I'll have to look no, for that. Not fair. I think they're being pretty random about it because I heard somebody called and asked for a ticket and were told that no, they were only being like hand selected for certain participants. Right. So, and they did that with a so, lot of things. I, I don't know, know why you that know, was. when the magic bands first started. You know, you were sort of beta testing for a while. So they do that with a lot of programs. But I would assume that that would go to DVC members that bought directly, not bought resale. Yeah, probably they're uh, they're looking for the people who did, yeah who bought uh, who paid full price. Although they're so, I mean, if they're giving out tickets to people at bus stops, they're probably not. <laughs> they're probably desperate enough that they're not looking at your content. All looking. I can imagine right now are those guys that stand on the street corner in New York and be like, "Hey, do you want to see a comedy show tonight?" Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're one step away from them dropping them from helicopters, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So you know, I think. Like like Emily said, to Emily's point, you know, uh, Disney Visa, Disney Annual Pass holders, you could a lot of the discounts and the um, perks that you're getting from DVC right now can be found through those as well. Sure. So, yeah, and and I don't know, sort of in what we're seeing with Div you know, the way Disney's behaving right now, it seems like they're certainly out to um, capitalize as much as they can on the dollar. 
So I, well, I don't I know about that. Surprised. I'm not sure about that. Really? You're not sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like to. Really? Okay, you're entitled to that opinion. <laughs> but as long as we have Len on. And if I had a buzzer, I would hit it. I, I know. I know you would. <laughs> exactly. But we're having Len on and talk about spending some money. Len, I would love to get your take for our our spotlight this month on the Polynesian DVC. You've had the pleasure of staying there recently, I've heard. At a bungalow. I know. Oh, I loved hearing about it. you got to tell us about this. Uh, all right. So, so normally we would not, this is not the sort of thing that we would we would do. The uh, You guys know that the bungalows, if you converted the points to cash, are somewhere between you know $2,200 and $3,500 a night. You can oh. actually own a small island. Yeah. it's, it's <laughs> uh, With the airfare, what it is right now, it's actually cheaper to fly to Fiji than to stay <laughs> in in the Bora Bora bungalows. Um, but we had given uh, my younger sister um, some points for spring break, 160 points at Animal Kingdom Lodge for uh, like a week or you know six months or whatever you know it is at Animal Kingdom Lodge. And three days before uh, they were ready to go, her husband, my brother-in-law, got a promotion. He had to go out and meet with his team. They couldn't go on their trip. So we had 160 points we needed to spend within 30 days. And the, uh, the only thing that we had not stayed out that was available because it was spring break was the bungalows. So we booked one night, 160 points, which is painful. I mean, just to think about. <laughs> wow. So at, uh, at $14 a point, it was like $2,240 um, oh. to book it for one night, which was fine. Um, we which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, it's one of those things where you just don't think about it, right? It's like, right. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a life experience, and we're you know we're going to do it. So, right. and we booked actually the next night. We booked at uh, Saratoga Springs in a studio just so we could walk to to Disney Springs. And by the way, I love Saratoga Springs just for that now. So we 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 get to the to check in, and it's the same check in as as regular Polynesian. It's not nothing separate. Um, but we check in at noon. They take our cell phone numbers, our email addresses, and everything. They're like, okay, well, you know, we'll check in at four. We'll we'll text you something. So we, you know, we hang around the resort. We're walking around, taking pictures, looking at stuff. So you know, four o'clock comes, four o'clock goes, four thirty comes, four thirty goes. We're like, hey, we should, you know, where's our text? Five o'clock comes, five o'clock goes. And at this point, I'm telling Laurel that hour that we just lost because we you can check in at four. You have to check out by eleven. So it's like nineteen hours. In the uh, in the resort, every hour is like one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Oh, that's like so, so that's we, like LeBron James money. <laughs> you know, right? So like we've we've just lost one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. We've lost essentially you know nine points or, or the equivalent of one night stay at Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs the next time we lost that because Disney did not text us with our room number. So we finally get it like five fifteen. Um, we walk back to the front desk and they're like, "Oh yeah, your room's been ready." Like, <laughs> Thanks. Not mad, right? No, <laughs> right. no, but no apologies. No, let me give you your nine points back or whatever, right? None of that. I'm fine. And we'd already agreed that we were not going to leave the room at all. Because, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Hell no, right? Exactly. <laughs> right, right? I'm taking two by fours and nails. Thinking, we're not leaving <laughs> the room. So oh, we did, and, and first of all, it's, it's beautiful. It's, uh, the outside is not great. I wish they would, uh, they would have painted them bright colors. Um, and in talking to people at the DVC, at the Poly DVC, they said that they specifically did not paint them bright colors because they didn't want people requesting like the dark red one or the dark orange one. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fine, I get it. It's you know, it's, we can't have nice things. I understand. But we, you you go in, and first of all, you ring the doorbell, and every time you push the doorbell, it rings a different chime. Ooh. And that's that's like one of those magical details that you just love. And, and you get in and you can immediately tell everything in the bungalow is all of, is, is top notch. All the fit and the finish of everything is exquisite. The mattresses are the most comfortable mattresses on Disney property. The, the slate floor and the uh, woven carpet are just wonderful on your feet. The showers make you feel like no inanimate object should make you feel. I mean, that good. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a relationship oh, with the shower and it would be fine. Um, everything's beautiful. There's a television in the master bathroom mirror. Um, everything, everything is perfect. Everything worked. Everything was just top quality. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. The, uh, and you really have an exquisite view. Of the Magic Kingdom, we were in 7019, which is the next closest to the ferry dock, but it was a straight shot over to the 
Magic Kingdom fireworks. The electrical water pageant comes by so close that like Laurel and I were actually debating whether one of us could swim out to it. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> At the time, so it was day like, out of the lakes. <laughs> yeah, we but I mean, just everything in it is is fine. If it wasn't two thousand dollars a night, I, whole wholehearted recommendation. Here's the the thing that besides the price that got me, we were one bungalow away from being the closest to the ferry TTC dock. Every 12 minutes, and I timed it, every 12 minutes when a ferry leaves, the horn goes off. And oh. I will I will now imitate the horn for you. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Ha! <laughs> that was good. Ha! That, was, that was spot on. <laughs> it stops conversation because you can't hear anything else. You can't hear the television. You can't hear each other. It is that close. And it starts like at, at like half an hour to 45 minutes before the park opens. And it goes to half an hour to 45 minutes after the park ends. Oh. So the park opens at 7 and the park is open until 2. By law, they're required to run the ferry horn. Well, you didn't want to sleep, did you? Wow. Yeah, it's like you I, I tried to nap and couldn't. And it's like there's, <laughs> can, you can have a baby sleep. There's no way you're ever going to nap um, on it, which is, which is fine. But the other interesting thing is this. When you're sitting out on the deck which you would want to do, right? Because you want to take advantage of it. You're so close to the ferry that you you can have normal conversations with people on the ferry. And <laughs> let me just give you every conversation that I had with people. Because <laughs> it was exactly the same every single time a ferry flight. Hey, how much is that room? <laughs> about, about, it's about $2,500 a night. And then this is the parent turning to the child. Stay in school, kids. Every- <laughs> <laughs> Go to <Yeah>. medical school. <laughs> I, I had that conversation, no doubt, ten times while we were out watching the electrical water pageant and the fireworks. It was, it was kind of funny. And uh, the next morning, we saw people out uh, doing the fishing thing. By the way, that fishing thing looks amazing. The fishing on uh, Seven Seas Lagoon. It, yeah. Those people catching fish like one after the other. It was like a carnival game. Mm-hmm. We've, really? we've, we all have to go down and do that at some point. I mean, I don't know if you, even if you don't like fishing, just the idea that you could go back and say. Yeah, I caught thirty fish. You know, it's Disney caught thirty yeah. fish. Yeah, awesome. But the um, oh, and then the other thing that bought, so the other thing that was so we we checked in late, right? The first knock on the door to say to check whether we were out of the bungalow came before nine a.m. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they oh, no, knocked no, no. on your door. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I I at least had enough composure. Oh. To, to not say, oh, hell no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I was about to, that should have been Morse code for stay as long as you want. <laughs> yeah. And it, so we so we had about 16 hours uninterrupted, maybe 15 and a half hours uninterrupted in the bungalow. We ordered um, the Ohana feast, which, by the way, <gasps> if you ever do this. In the room? It, yeah, to your room. And <gasps> they it was. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That sounds amazing. Oh, it, it was. It was. I mean, I, it, I was. I was so happy because it was so much food. They're, they they want to make sure that you do not call back and say, "By the way, I'm still hungry." <laughs> <laughs> you they, could have sat out on the balcony and just fed people as they went by on the ferry. We, we ordered the Ohana feast for two, and then we made the mistake of ordering uh, a, a sushi roll. And the woman who took the order said to me. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> is she not good? She's like, you have no idea how much food you just ordered. You might want to just order Ohana for one. I know there's, she's like, I know there's two people. I'll give you, you know, we'll give you the silver work. You might want to order. I'm like, no, no, no. Well, you know, we'll, we'll eat the leftovers in the morning. But there was no. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I, I ate Neither the- is staying in this bungalow. <laughs> you know, it's like, lady, this is not the worst decision I've made in the last <laughs> Hours. I mean, right? So right. we, uh, so we, we grazed on this all night. Woke up in the morning. I'm eating like you know shrimp dipped in uh, Polynesian sauce for breakfast because why not? Right? Exactly. Why not? Right. Right. Why not? The bread and the bread pudding was so good. Oh, what the. Oh. Oh. Did Did you eat some of it in the shower since you don't like? The- <laughs> I went. So I actually, I actually took a shower in both showers. I, <laughs> I laid in both good beds. Choice. I uh, put clothes in every closet, uh, tried every television. I, I mean, I did every damn thing. I pushed the, I pushed the, uh, the doorbell until the, uh, the chimes repeated, which took a long time. <laughs> are they, are they just different chimes? Are they Disney too? What no, they're all they? Disney, but they're, and they're, they're all charming. Like they're, 
somebody it was someone's pet project clearly to do it they they put a lot of thought that but really there's nothing wrong with anything in that room every single bed is perfect like it was the best sleep i had like in the last three months of trips wow did you we sit just, on the swings so yeah yes yeah, i'm in, the swing. <laughs> I'm in what, love with those swings <laughs> what we didn't do um was we didn't go in the plunge pool because it was uh, it was chilly that night uh, oh. and the other interesting thing was this. We had heard that the overall occupancy rate for the bungalows is only around 30%. Oh, my gosh. So yeah, there was shocker. there was no one. Yeah, no, right. There was no one on, on either side of us. And how many bungalows are there total? 20. So wow. I've heard that they they get so like six, up a lot. Wow. Yeah, they, they, and they might. Um, there, the, we only saw one other bungalow that was occupied, and it was a couple. It was two people. And we were we were a couple. We were two people. Hmm. Uh, um, I would I would you could definitely have four in there. I don't know that you would want to pit, put six. Um, It'll be interesting to see if they shuffle the point charts after a year or so, so that the studios are a little bit more and the bungalows are a little less. Yeah, and the thing so the thing we're trying to figure out is what are they going to do at, at, at Wilderness Lodge? Because mm-hmm. if these things are thirty percent occupied, right? What, when they put more volume, they're going to have to drop the points. I would think. You know, if That's it was, what I would think. If it was twelve hundred dollars, and if it was half price, you know, if it was like the the cost of like the like a vice presidential suite at Animal Kingdom Lodge, twelve fourteen hundred dollars, sure, I, I could see two nights there as a splurge, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, oh, by the way, so uh, you guys know uh, Steve Seifert, Tiki Man, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I actually call Steve after I check in. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> dude, you know, they, it, I've lost seventy five minutes here. I've lost you know almost two hundred dollars. He's like, <laughs> he's like, really, you should stay there for two nights. I'm like. <laughs> just run the card <laughs> yeah i know right it's like ah, i'll send you the bill yeah it's like oh we stayed there for five nights and you know after a couple of days it gets really good. like dude dude you're you're we're, we're completely outclassed here but um what is but, the what is this the sleeping arrangement are there two beds are there is it a pullout sofa so there's uh if you uh on our, the above you walked in <laughs> immediately to the right there was a king-size bed and again the most comfortable bed i've ever slept on in, on disney nice. Pop. Yeah, uh, walk-in, huge walk-in shower, huge tub. Um, Steve actually said to check out how long it would take to fill the tub. And by, by the looks of it, it was at least an hour to fill the tub. Oh. I mean, it's, the, tub is, the tub is like almost hip hot. It is a deep tub. Wow. Uh, then if you go to the right, it is, I believe it's a queen bed, but I could be wrong. And it has one of the Murphy bed fold-downs that you've seen pop up across yep. across. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, everything's super comfortable. They've got some really great lighting effects um, when you actually open up. And there's the, a, in the pull down, there's also a little illustration of um, Lilo and Stitch Lilo and playing Stitch. on a hammock at night. Yeah. Super cute. But great, um, great um, closet space. Really good amenities. I mean, again, all the the lighting works. All the fixtures work. The televisions in each room are huge. And there's also, I believe, isn't there um, a pull-out couch and another pull-down in the main room? I know there's like a pull-out the... couch. I don't know if one of the chairs pulled down as well. It looks like it, it might. I know that there's a, I know that the couch pulls down. The couch was actually pretty comfortable. I don't know that it would sleep on it. That's what I'm saying. I think you know, four people is good for that that size room. That's a good number, yeah. And this will but all it be does in sleep the, uh... technically to eight. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would do that. That'd be a little <laughs> tight, yeah. Well, although eight people at least could have. I don't know if you're splitting the price. <laughs> the problem is, is that you, you don't have the bathrooms for it, right? That's for, for bathrooms. See, that's, see what I'm telling you, Bob. True. Two bathrooms wins every we, time. You got the lake out there, though. We've got you got two right. bathrooms. You've got two full baths, but for eight you would want three. Oh, you'd want three. Yeah, the, just because the way the setup is, the the master bath is in the in the far corner of the master bedroom, so. Yeah, the people who are in the master bedroom would use it, but you don't want you know other people traipsing through your bedroom to do it. I guess you could, but and the other one is oh oh, oh we did laundry that night too, so the laundry <laughs> oh, we mopped the floor. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> laundry. I mean everything. It was um, and the laundry is the laundry is actually a, a little bit noisy. It's in a um, it's in a cubby uh, like a little storage area on the way to the uh, second bathroom, which I understand why they put it there because of plumbing and everything, but um, you know it was. Between that and the the fairy uh, horn noise, it was kind of it was hard, kind of hard to watch television. In the end, you could definitely have conversations with the with the washer and dryer running, but uh, uh, you know, with the TV was on. The other thing was, have you guys heard the thing about the 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 whooshing sound 
that comes from underneath the uh, the bungalows? No. Um, Wish I, I, isn't, isn't that the pump line that actually? Yeah. Sources? Yeah, that's the pump that actually. A lot of condos have that. Sometimes it has to. You have to get the essentially the sewage to the mainland. So it's like a pump that pushes the stuff to the mainland. If I'm not mistaken. Exactly. For lack of, for lack well, of a that's better That's a very undisney Joe. <laughs> like, you know. So it's a, it's a pressurized tank, and I think they're using two of them actually. I think they're using um, one pressurized tank for water coming in, so that they can maintain the water pressure coming in from, I guess, wherever the main, the main sor- uh, source is at the, you know, the on, on land, you know, in the middle of the resort. And then I believe there's a pressurization pump pumping water out as well, so like uh, gray water going out. Um, because when Laurel was taking a shower in, uh, in the morning, I definitely heard that uh, go off, you know, a couple of times. And it's again, it's it's loud enough to be like, it actually vibrated the, the bungalow a little bit. It's it's one of, again, it's one of those things that where you're like, it's it's loud enough that it would stop you and you would say, you know, the hell was that? Did you hear it at night as well? No, I didn't. Hey, hey Len, so, I, have a, I have a question for you, Len. You said that your bungalow was like the second to the last from the ferry dock. Did Did you feel like there was like a, a privacy issue? Like, I don't know how many windows are on that bungalow, but if you were like sitting in your bungalow or if you were out on like the, the deck, did you feel like oh, everybody's staring at me? I just want a little privacy. Well, people were did talking you, to him. Oh, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> did you feel like personally, like you had, since you spent 16 hours there, uh, yeah. that you had, a, you had a privacy issue? Like, this is great, but like, I don't want to deal with these people. I don't want to see these people. Like, did you feel that or... So the uh, the decks are actually staggered a little bit. So if I look to my right, I was I was already like ten feet in front of the uh, the other deck. So if you looked immediately to your to your right, you wouldn't see anybody. If you looked immediately to your left, there's actually only a tiny window on that side of the other bungalow to my left, and the deck was ahead of me. So you, you it wasn't like you would you know it's not like being at a stoplight in a car where you turn your head and you're looking directly into somebody else's um, car. It, they, they're staggered enough to that. Um, I think they're far enough away. It wasn't a problem, you know. Uh, if if there would have been actual people on the deck, you know, especially if they were, you know, drinking or playing music or whatever, that might have been annoying. But it wouldn't have even been top three of my the things I would worry about. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. If you, um, if anybody is considering the poly and wants to check out the bungalows, um, we, on my recent trip this weekend, we discovered we were staying at the Polynesian Hotel, um, and we discovered that between two and four, they'll give you a a tour of the bungalows probably because they aren't open and you have to be DVC, that was though. darn cool no i mean they didn't check anything we just said can oh. we heard you had tours of the bungalows and they just said okay sure and we immediately were whisked to them they didn't wow. even wow. they didn't make a single sales pitch or anything they just opened the door for us and wow. stood there and were willing to answer questions and then when we were done looking we just left and said thank you, and they didn't say anything like "Do you want our phone number?" or huh. anything. Yeah. They just let us walk out. So well, with it's a 30, no pressure 30% situation. Thirty percent occupancy, yeah. They're, yeah, they're... really. I haven't seen the in the studios yet. Um, we're trying to work our way through. Um, this sounds terrible. All the grand villas. It Good doesn't choice. sound terrible to Emily. She's used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like, so we've done uh, we've done Bailey Tower. Um, so we're working our way through. And it's we just started really. So we've done Bailey Tower. We've done Animal King Lodge. Um, we've done the, the top line of the poly. I don't know that I could actually justify the expense of doing the Grand Floridian. Um, we, oh, did we did Bailey. We did Bailey Tower over New Year's Eve. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah. You got to try it, Len. It's amazing. I mean, I haven't stayed in the Grand Floridian's Grand Villas, yeah. but the rooms alone, like the one bedroom. Oh, I think it's the one bedroom beautiful. is my, yeah. The one bedroom at Grand Floridian is my favorite. I mean, I don't, even like, I don't even like the Victorian stuff that much. It's not my style, but mm-hmm. the, the room is such high quality. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's and it's not even stuffily Victorian. You know, yeah. what, what's up with the shower though? I mean, you could you could fit eight people in that, right? Well, I often do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually have a video of myself, and I don't know if we have it on the on the on the website or not, but I think I have a video of myself. Actually, making the echo noise like echo in the shower and having to go back. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, wow. that's those rooms are really. Nice. And it's, uh, by the way, the, uh, so the interesting thing is in this year's unofficial guide reader survey, the only re- Disney resort to get an A overall rating was the Grand Floridian Villas. Huh? Really? Wow! Oh, wow! No, I, I totally understand it. I mean, great. Deserved. Yeah, great service, great rooms. Again, not I'm not really keen on the the decor, but um, the 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 amenities are so nice in there and the service is insane yeah i've got one question for you len 
Mm-hmm. How many of the toiletries did you take away? All of them. <laughs> take away. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I, <laughs> I I the green or the orange ones? <laughs> uh, they were yes. green. They were not orange. Ooh. You would think they would have had the H2O, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I um, whenever I whenever I go on a on a Disney trip and I, I don't bring Hannah, I'll grab her um, all the soaps and the shampoos. So we've actually got a. I mean, you guys probably have this too. An entire collection, an entire closet full of, oh yeah, uh, the soaps and stuff. So <laughs> I better have as I'm driving home from from uh, Orlando, my headlights better be really high from the weight of uh, all of this. <laughs> exactly. If I'm staying at twenty five hundred dollar a night room, no. you're saying it's exactly. nice. <laughs> I mean, so I, I'm pulling out my sack from the Polly's hotel. I and... actually hear you doing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so the green, the shampoo's green, and the shower gel's orange, and the conditioner's orange. So I don't think this is the same as the grand stuff. So, and so we didn't did get you... aloe or oh. foot rub stuff like we do at the grand. So you probably didn't recover your uh, Run Disney registration through your toiletries this time. No, although apparently <laughs> I can sell all the free T-shirts for like fifty dollars each on. Yes, yeah, ma'am, so. you can. <laughs> oh wow! Hey, Lynn, when you tech check into the uh, bungalow, do they whisk you away in like a Fantasy Island car, like a golf cart, or how do you? <laughs> What's the chicken? He, 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 he didn't even get a phone call. Like like <laughs> so you just walk no. there. I'm just. They used to, uh, when you check in now for the I concierge. Now I see Ricardo Montalban and taxi exactly. in my head. <laughs> they no, used to get a camp um, car over there. They, yeah, right. There was, uh, there's actually the, you know, the special uh, parking, so we found a really close oh. spot and just hauled the luggage out. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they would have done it. The service at the Poly is still you know, pretty exquisite, but um, yeah, dude, I just couldn't get over the price. I mean, wow. it's really nice. It, it, don't care. I mean, it is a, it is a nice room. Is it? Well, yeah. if you were going to assign a price based on just across the board Disney prices, what would you like if you could adjust? You know, I, I've never actually stayed at one of the presidential or vice presidential suites, but I know what they cost. Mm-hmm. You know, I would I would rate it something like that. Like for me, okay. you know, it, it, I don't think it's objectively better than the uh, the vice presidential suite at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, which. Has a circular um, patio outdoors that looks over the, and has a dining room. I mean, it's it's a room that you would enter, enter in, uh, and it overlooks the savannah. It has the view of the Magic Kingdom, which I get, um, but I don't know that it's worth twice as much as the Animal Kingdom you know, room. That's that's a lot. This is gonna sound picky, but did you think that the kitchen was a little cramped, like with that big table? When I was touring it, I thought. Although the wall of kitchen stuff looked great, like all the appliances looked top notch and everything, I thought that the table looked like it took up a lot of space there. You know, I was I was a little bit concerned about it. Uh, it ended up not being a problem. The kitchen was super functional. I made you know a, a light breakfast the next morning. The um, the one thing I, that was a little bit problematic. Your shrimp. <laughs> yeah, the shrimp exactly with the with the Polynesian <laughs> sauce. It was delicious, and the, there was still banana bread left up in the morning too. Oh, um, how did that happen? <laughs> I know. It's, what, what goes great with coffee with a caramel sauce? You're like, yes! Oh, mm. <laughs> For sure. It's nowhere to actually plug in a laptop and work unless you're at the table. And if you are at the table, the nearest outlet is um, in the wall perpendicular to the refrigerator. So you actually have to run the cord on the floor. Um, and that's, I mean, you know, if kids are walking by, someone's just going to pull your laptop onto the ground. What would have been better is if they would have had an in-ground outlet um, mm-hmm. and in a little grommet or something in the middle of the table, that would have been a little bit smarter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well guys, that is, uh, that's all I have, uh, for Len. You guys have any other questions for Len before we, uh, wrap this show up for this, uh, DVC, uh, chaos. I mean, uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> I just, awesome. I just want to tell Len that there are people growing up in this world that have been reading his book like a Bible since they were uh, old enough to plan a v- Disney vacation when their parents said we were going to Disney the first time. Oh, you guys so, are the best. Thank you so much. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. And, Thank you guys very and, much. And honestly, touringplans.com is, it's what I live by. So yes. great job on that, Len. Oh, you know, fr- fr- free plug yep. for your site, but I recommend it to all my friends who, you know, want to, you know, like plan trips, my dude. This is a site you got to subscribe to. Just pay, you know, pay the money. It's amazing. It's everything you need. One site. So great job on it, man. Oh, thanks very much. And I, I love, it. Yeah, I love the absolutely top notch. All and right, Bob Tim. Tim. I just you know you're going to be this famous someday. 
Uh, if you're not already. Never. Never. <laughs> we know where to find uh, our, our DVC Roundtable uh, crew, uh, Len. Where where can people find <laughs> I'm uh, Len at touringplans.com, and on Twitter, I am at Len Testa. Awesome. So make sure you guys pick up the book and uh, make up uh, and, and uh, pick up that uh, subscription to uh, Touring Plans. Fantastic. Absolutely. Excellent. Everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. If you have any questions for our future DVCs, just send them to a podcast at resortloop.com. Thanks for joining the Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. Hey guys, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna talk about the Polynesian tonight. I'm gonna add another guy to the call. Hope you don't mind. Oh, cool. Okay. Hey, I just awesome. Excellent. stayed there, so that's perfect. Oh, nice, Mr. Testa. So everyone, be on your best behavior. Yeah. No way. This is an honor. No way. It's <laughs> not really, Len. Mr. Testa. Is... No, it is. It is. Hold on one second. Let me. Uh, <laughs> sure. I'm not getting my. Uh, I just dude. realized what a Disney nerd I am because I'm like all turning red right now. <laughs> Can I just tell you that Lynn Testa was actually in my car on the way home, so I'm feeling a little. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Lynn, you... I was like 12 reading his books in great detail, planning family uh, vacation. Oh, 12. Uh, wow. Lynn, I believe Emily just called you old. So. And I think Lynn Thanks. just hung up. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> wow. Lynn Testa. If I just take a moment. Dude, my I podcasting think... career is complete. I'm drinking a scotch tonight in honor of uh, Prince. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. well played. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> We're all really excited. You're, you're all giggling. <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know why. <laughs> they don't giggle like this when it's just us, Lynn. No. It's, See you, Lynn. It's, 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 <laughs> that was good. That was, that was spot on. <laughs>